Good morning, ladies. Again, uh, I would like to first acknowledge the leadership of the house. Like she said, we are a people that honor the leadership. So I'd like to acknowledge the leadership of the house, some of them in absentia, and to acknowledge my label um, and head team. And actually, thank you. You know, I concur with um, Omo, you know, with the words that uh, she has said. So let's get into it. Let's read the Bible from, we're going to read from the book of Luke 1. From verse 5 to 45, it's quite a lengthy read, but I think let's read it just for, for, the, for, for purpose reasons. So he reads as follows. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the division of Abijah. His wife was of the daughters of Aaron, and his name was Elizabeth. And then they were both religious before God, working in all the commandments and ordinances of the Lord blamelessly. But they had no child because Elizabeth was barren, and they were both well advanced in years. So it was that while he was serving as priest before God in the order, in the order of the division according to the custom of the priesthood, his lot fell to Beninces when he went into the temple of the Lord. And the whole multitude of the people was praying outside of the hour of incense. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him standing on the right side of the altar of incense, and when Zacharias saw him, he was troubled and fell upon him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zachariah, for, prayer, for your prayer is heard. And your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you shall call his name John. And you will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at this birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord, and he shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. He will also be filled with the Holy Spirit, even, when, even from his mother's womb. And he will turn many of the children of Israel to the Lord their God. He will also go before him in the spirit and in, in the power of Elijah. To turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the dis disobedient to the wisdom to, of the just. To make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And Zachariah said to the angel, How shall I know this? For I am old and my wife is well advanced in years. And the angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel, I'm Gabriel who stands in the presence of God. And I was sent to speak to you and bring you. This, this, this led tidings. But behold, you will be mute and not be able to speak until the day these things take place because you did not believe my words and, and will, full, will be fulfilled in their own time. And the people waited for Zachariah and mother that, they, that lingered so long in the temple. But when he came out, he could not speak to them and they perceived that he had seen a vision in the temple for he beckoned to them and remained speechless. So it was as soon as the day of service were completed that he departed to his own house. Now after those days, his wife Elizabeth con conceived and he hid herself five months, saying, that, saying, thus the Lord has dealt with me in the days that when he looked on me to take away my reproach amongst people. Now in the six months, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a vision betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and having come in, the angel, the angel said to her, Rejoice, highly favored one. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women. But when he saw him, she was troubled at this saying and considered what manner of greeting this, this is. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and you shall call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest, and the Lord your God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob, for in of kings, kingdoms there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I do not know a man? And then the angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also the Holy One who is born will be called the Son of God. Now indeed, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age, and this is now the sixth month for her who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold, maid servant of the Lord, let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Now Mary arose in the days and went into the hill country with haste to a city of Judah and entered the house of Zacharias and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened that when Elizabeth had the greeting of Mary, that, ba that babe lived in a womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Then she spoke with loud voice and said, Blessed are you amongst women. Blessed are the fruit of your womb. But why is this granted to me? The mother, of my, the mother of my Lord should come to me. For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ear, 
The babe leaped in my womb for joy. Blessed is she who believed, for there will be a fulfillment of those which were told for which I told her from the Lord. Amen. So now when we check the story of these two two ladies, so this is Mary and, and Elizabeth, um, right? So they had two things in common, right? The, the things that they have in common was that both of them, they had miraculous conception. So as I was busy, uh, you know, studying those two ladies, there's something that the Holy Spirit revealed to me that, you know, the purposes of God, you know, the, has no age restriction, right? But as people, we have to restrict ourselves from certain things, right? To say these two women, two, both of them had purposes, but Mary, if, if we read, it says, I think it doesn't necessarily say in the Bible, but I think Mary was, was around 14 years, I think, when he, she got the word. And then Elizabeth, the Bible says that she was in an advanced age, meaning that he, she was beyond the childbearing age. But both of them, they gave birth to the two men that, uh, that form part of the important part of our salvation. You know, Elizabeth gave birth to, to uh, uh, John the Baptist and Jesus gave birth, and uh, Mary gave birth to Jesus, our Lord and Savior. So now we see Mary was visited by the Lord uh, to tell her about her purpose when she was young, right? And her first question, when the angel of the Lord said to her that you're going to conceive, her first question to the angel was that, how? Because I know not men. Basically, how? Because I am a virgin, right? So when I was looking at the other definition of, of the word virgin, it was saying that a person, a person who is inexperienced in a, certain, in, a certain, in a certain activity, right? So meaning that Mary is just basically saying, like, I'm inexperienced, like how, right? But the angel answers and says, the Holy Spirit will fill you. That's capacity right there, right? To say that everything that God has called you for, he'll capacitate you for that. You know, one woman of God said that in order to achieve um, supernatural tasks, you need uh, supernatural capacity, right? Like there might be a mirror here, you know, to say, Hore, like me, <laughs> like, but God is saying that I will capacitate you, right? To say God is saying that he's not calling the, the qualified, he's not calling the equipped, but he equips, right, the called. And then when we look at Elizabeth, then with Elizabeth, the Bible says that, you know, when uh, the first response from, from Zachariah, because now the, the husband Zachariah is the one who got the message. And then he said, how? Because my wife is of an advanced age, right? But now God came to show, he came to break the status quo, right? To say, even they might be Elizabeth here who's asking themselves, at this age, with my background, with things that I've been through, you know, with, you don't know where I come from, but God is saying, those are the principles in the the system that has been set by the world. It's not the word from the, it's not the word that, you know, the, the, that God has said. Uh, so can we read our Bible from, from Isaiah 62 verse 2? And it reads as follows. The gentle shall see your righteousness and all kings your glory. You shall be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord will name. Now, this is what the purpose of God comes. It brings you a new identity, right? The identity that is informed by God and not the identity informed by where you come from. So when you see these two ladies, there is Mary. Prior to Mary giving birth to Christ, she was referred to as Mary the Virgin, right? But then God came and then Christ was conceived and all of a sudden, till to this day, is Mary the mother of Jesus. Because now purpose came and it changed her identity, right? And even with Elizabeth, you know, we hear the Bible says, the angel said to, to Mary that your, your, relative, your relative Elizabeth has, given, uh, has conceived her who was called barren. And the angels does not say, her who is barren, her who was called barren. So meaning that it was never even God that called her barren, right? But it was, just, it, it was just an identity that she was given, you know, along the way. You know, and... Again, there might be Elizabeth in the house, you know, that says that I don't know which area of your life that has been declared barren, but it was that good. Did what, is it what God says? Because the Bible says in Isaiah 62 that you shall be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord will name. To say the state of your barrenness, you know, is it what the name of the Lord has called, you know? To say if your identity has nothing to do with what God has said, then it's not your identity, Right. And even with, um, I remember even with the story, we, remember, we all remember the story of the lady with the issue of blood, right? And it says that she suffered for 12 years, right? And just on that day, it says that Jesus was working among multitudes, right? And after the lady touched her, she, he said, I felt 
you know, um, he felt some power leaving him, and it's like, somebody touched me. And it was like, out of so many people, like, how every day are you going to be touched? You know, but she could, he could sense for somebody, and then until the lady said, it's me. And her response is like, your faith has healed you, right? To say, he felt her heart touch again. He's not even asking a lot of questions. Whose child are you? You know, what have you been through? It's just you are healed. And, you know, I can imagine, maybe even in those days, for the 12 years, she was always referred to as the lady with the issue of blood. But after the day that Christ touched her, she was no longer the lady with the issue of blood. She was the lady that was healed by Christ. All of a sudden, her identity in that spirit of a second, her identity changed, right? And it changed to a sense that I'm sure even that sickness was deterring and limiting her in terms of doing certain things. But after the day that the healing came, then all of a sudden she can do certain things because now her identity has changed. Even with Abraham, after God gave Abraham the word, she, he was Abraham at the time. And he said, Hore, you are the father, I'm declaring you a father of the nation, and no longer shall you be called Abraham, but you shall be called Abra Abraham, you know, the, the father of the nation. So now, his, now purpose, his, his purpose brought him now a new identity. But now, the other thing is now, his purpose, his identity, is things that God has called for, but they require a certain level of, of, uh, of character from us. And the character that I could pick up from Mary and the mental that I could pick up from Mary in all of this is that there had to be a willingness and obedience from her side. So the Bible says in Isaiah 1, 9, that if you are willing and obedient, you will eat the fruit of the land, right? To say, the, no way in the Bible should you say, oh, Mary was forced and was convinced into this thing. After she asked the question to say oh, how, her second, question, her second response after the angel said, Hore, the Holy Spirit shall fool you. Her response was that, let it be unto, you, unto me according to your word. You know, Papa often says, Hore, uh, Papa of the house, you know, he often says that uh, men will not frustrate the purpose of God. To say, or if it was not Mary, it was going to be someone else. The world had to be saved. We had to have a savior, right? But we are grateful for Mary. Now we are standing here today. We are saved and we have a relationship with Christ because of an obedience of a woman, right? And then, um, so that is that. And then now on the, um, on the mental, or on, the, on the character of Elizabeth now, I pick up patience, stillness, and quietness, right? So now, the, the, first, the, the response to, from, from Zachariah to, to the angel was that, Hore, no, the, the angel said first to, to Zachariah, Hore, your prayers have been heard. So meaning one, Hore, there was an, a prayer that was uttered. There were supplications that are brought before God, right? And it says then after that, the angel then replied, had the conversation. After the conversation, then the Bible says, Hore, uh, Zacharias was mute, right? At, up until the day that, uh, John was, was, was born, right? And as you read again here, it says that for six months, the baby, why Elizabeth did not move, right? But in that, you know, Mama was preaching last day, Nablala, about, um, you know, a posture in time of need, right? And from what I'm picking up here is that while we're waiting for our prayers to answer, sometimes you get a word, you're just waiting for a word, but there's a certain posture, you know, that you need to keep in that. God shut Mulomoa as Zachariah because I think already Zachariah was asking questions for how, because my, you know, so I guess she had to be shut, mouth shut because now maybe with his words, with his tongue, he was going to abort the seat, right? And we see that even we, with um, Elizabeth, in her stillness, now, in, in that six months that the baby was not leaping, there's no word that she uttered, but I'm sure probably praying. She prayed. So let us read uh, our Bibles from James 3. Verse 5 to 9 and see what the, the Bible refers to a tongue as, you know, that it's just so, it's such a small part of our body, but it can corrupt the entire, the entire body. So James 3, 5 to 9 reads as follows, likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body, but it makes a great boast. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a spark. The tongue is also a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body. Set the whole course of one's life on fire and is itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no man being it can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. With the tongue, listen to this. With the tongue, we praise God. And we praise our Lord and Father. And with it, we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. To say that with the very same tongue, you praise God, 
and then we come back with the very same tongue and kiss the like the people who were created by the likeness of God. So now we see that even Elizabeth, she was kind because now Kishon understands the power of a tongue. You know, I was, I was watching this clip um, by Sissy Winans and she was saying that, you know, in the waiting, you must decide the posture that you're going to keep in your waiting, right? To say, oh, like Elizabeth, in your waiting, while you're waiting for those prayers to be answered, while you're waiting for the words, maybe the prophetic word that you got, you know, you are silent, like lay me, like as women, especially as women. <laughs> You know, I think if there's something we should get to, you know, guard our tongue. And the Bible says also, we must guard our hearts with all diligence for through it comes the issue, flows the issues of life. You know, to say, even in our waiting, we're still on our knees, right? In our waiting, we are still living righteously, you know? In our waiting, we still align with the word of God. You know, in our waiting, that's correct. You just need to decide what after you prayed, what's the posture that you're going to keep in your waiting? Because in that waiting, you know, you have the power and as yourself, you know, to, to abort the seat, you know, of that prayer that you have uttered. And then lastly, the character on both the ladies, they were yielded vessels, right? Hence, they were able to carry both of them. John was carried full time. Jesus was carried full time, you know. And for women who, who have kids in the house, will tell you, you know, when you are, you are pregnant, every trimester, they will tell you, you know, what you need to do, what your do's and don'ts, you know, they'll give you a, a whole lot of guidelines, right? And I believe, Jorge, with Elizabeth and Mary, they were both yielded vessels, right? Because they, they knew, Jorge, they are carrying such a fragile and precious seed, right? That they had to yield now to the Antonina, they had to yield to to this seat and then to this purpose in order for you to be kept. I'm sure, Jorge, and like I said, that the Holy Spirit revealed to me, Jorge, you know, there's no restrictions in, you know, when it comes to the purpose of God, but Rena, as, as people, we need to restrict ourselves from certain things, right? To say, Jorge, when you are pregnant, there's certain places you don't go, there's certain things you don't engage in, right? All of you just send some messages that I hear the woman, well, I don't have a child. You know, to say, Jorge, they sleep, you know, in a certain position, right? To say, Jorge, when you are carrying a seat, when you are carrying a seat, there's certain places, certain environments, you know, you don't enter, and otherwise then you go into somehow either give birth prematurely or, you know, give birth to a deformed um, child or that, that seed uh, is referred to here. Can we read uh, First Timothy 4, 12 to 5? And it reads as follows. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Until I come, devote yourself to the reading of scripture, to the preaching and to the teaching. Do not neglect your gift, which was given to you through prophecy when the body of elders was laid, when they laid their hands on you. Be diligent in this matters. Give yourself wholly to them so that everyone may see your progress. There's a, there's a I don't remember which uh, a version is that, that says, Hore, submit yourself wholly unto these things. Meaning that you submit yourself wholly unto the purpose of God, that it requires a lot. It is not just something that you're just going to take and run with it. There's so much that is required uh, f f from it. And then uh, uh, Luke 1, verse, uh, from verse 46 to verse 48. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. For he has regarded the lowly state of his maidservant. For behold, henceforth all generation will call me blessed. Right? It says that submit yourself wholly unto them so that everyone may see your progress. Definitely the progress of is evident. You know, we are definitely, you know, up to this generation, we are calling her blessed because she submitted herself wholly unto and to those peoples. And at, at, at the end, when, when now Mary, uh, I mean, Elizabeth, the baby was now leaping. And it says, Hore, the baby leaped when now Eliza, um, Mary came and she was filled with the, with the Holy Spirit. And I think if I had to bring it home here for us today, you know that we are carrying different seeds and purposes. And that's when we really need to be united, you know, as women. That even as we journey in this salvation, as we journey in, 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 in work in purpose and in identity, there's someone we just need to carry each other, that we're not going to be the one that says, Hore, you know, we're going to be the one that fix each other's crowns, right? Because, you, you know, we are carrying a different, you know, capacity. And then in closing, let us read Isaiah 43, 7. And it says that everyone who is called by my name, whom I've created for my glory, I have formed him, yes, I've made him. 
And then verse 21 says, These people I have formed for myself, they shall declare my praise. To say that even in our calling, even in our identity is for the glory of the Lord. It is never about us and we must never even ever confuse it for that. It is always for the glory of God. And yeah, I think let us be, as we are, you know, commemorating Women's Month, may we be reminded of our purpose of identity, you know, and that even as we live here and we go in back to our realities because it's the word and then you're going to go back to your realities, but may you be reminded, you know, that even when you go back to your realities that trying to define you as something else, as long as the mouth of the Lord has not said that, you are not that, you know. That is all. Thank you, ladies.